decisions here, and apparently I'm a little shiny. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure you subscribe to the new membership so we can get that rolling, and we're going to keep growing from there. But today, I want to actually get to you into a partial beginning of why I tell you to get a police officer's oath of office and also why they try so hard to actually keep it from you. One of the reasons I tell you to get it is because they swear or affirm to uphold and defend the constitution of the state that they're in as well as the United States Constitution. I've often spoke to you about the United States being the Constitution itself being a trust document. And one of the things I mean by that is the fact that it's a document that's executed by a signature and you're giving pretty much an oath to do something in the execution. So one of the reasons when you're going in to sue a police officer, one of the things you have to show is a cause of action. And I constantly talk to you about when you're suing someone civilly, it is dealing with the matter of contracts. And the first thing you have to do is show in this thing called duty of care. You have to show that the person had a duty of care or an obligation that is recognized by law. The reason why the oath of office is recognized by law is because they have to sign it and file it within 60 days of their hiring. Most of them do it the day they graduate. They at least fill it out. Now, as far as filing it, it is generally done within the first two weeks, so about 10 days. There are cases where it does take longer, but however, the normal is within 10 days. The such duty requires the actor to conform to a certain standard of conduct. This is where we look at when we talk about the guidelines of what they're supposed to do and we're talking about police procedures. These are the things that I am giving you because the deeper we go into this, the easier it is to understand what they can and cannot do. They are also outlined within their police conduct books because the example I gave the other day was the George Floyd incident where the four officers were arrested and now charged because they violated department policy. These are also records of them going outside of a certain standard of conduct. This is why you also look at character or habitual evidence. You're going to look for these things because again, if they are outside the standard of conduct, those things can be brought in and shown as evidence. And what I'm going to deal with as far as today, and then we're going to leave you, is the purpose of such conduct to protect others against unreasonable risk. Now, our unreasonable risk is their responsibility for the well-being of us as well as our safety. Anytime those things are breached, we then have a cause because that actually bleeds into the second part, which is the breach of that duty. You often hear me say they have a fiduciary duty. The fiduciary duty comes from the trust document that they swore to uphold and defend that's recognized by law that they filed. See, again, all of this voluntary stuff that they're doing, these are legal things that they're doing that tire them into doing something or require them to do something. The breach of that duty is the failure of them to do something. And that could be as simple as perform as an executive officer. Because when they're doing something as an executive officer, they cannot leak over into the legislative branch. They cannot leak over into the judicial branch. That's why they have these things called officer discretion, which is why qualified immunity is lost when they do something that is either willful or is done out of ignorance. In offering you a citation, which they have the choice to do or not to do, because most citations are administrative procedures because you're going into a court with no record. 
and it's discretionary. That means they're making a conscious choice to either write it or not to write it. So with them writing it, they made a conscious choice to either act on something that they believe is lawful. And if they believe it's lawful, that means they are doing something that is either done out of ignorance or they're choosing to do so. These are violations. These are breaches of duty. That's part of why I'm telling you to get the oath of office prior to suing them. Because again, it's also the start of the evidence. Because even if you're going and doing something as simple as traffic court, these things are what's required. And most of you, you're going to ask where do I get this. And basically, the easy is to look up elements of a cause of action and not do it on Google, but to go into a law library and look up these things. It's going to give you a list. And most of them are going to be found in O'Hara. And these are books that are used for after graduation. These are after, it's hard to say after market, but it is because it's done after someone graduates or after somebody has gone into the police force. So these are the things I'm talking about getting the oath of office because it's the proof that there is a contract that the police officer has directly with you, the people. That's all I got today. Keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting, get on the lookout for the live, join the memberships. There are four tiers. Get on one of the tiers and the master class are going to be bananas. So love you guys. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing and Supreme out.